And I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't do the bodybuilding bit, but I just started it anyway. But when it hits the first big crescendo, I take the shirt off and it's just like a quiet, you hear someone oh. go like, oh God. Oh, and then no. I'm turning around and unbuttoning my pants going like, oh. I should stop. Like, there's no reason oh. to keep doing this to myself. Oh no. And then I drop the pants in the second one. You hear someone go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Welcome to Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. After Dark. And of course, that uh, the voice message is at 818-253-1693 and the email is at drdrewafterdark at gmail.com. Today it is my pleasure to welcome Big J Okerson, BigJComedy.com. I know Big J from the Skank Fest and from Legion of Skanks, which you can hear every. Well, you, can you actually hear it when you guys do yeah, it? Yeah, they do it live, yeah. live Monday, and then they come out on Friday at the stand. And uh, that was such a pleasant surprise. It was fun. Uh, yeah, it was great having you. And and. When a, a guest of your caliber comes in, I really am like, we're only set up to disappoint you. <laughs> like when Lewis, uh, when Lewis said you were coming on the show, yeah. I was like, no, like what? Are you, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Why? He's gonna not like us afterwards. <laughs> no, I loved it. I loved it. And the, not only did I like the humor and like the whole vibe and like your audience, which by the very dedicated group that shows yeah. up there, um, but there was uh, superhuman uh, uh, feats afoot. <laughs> Watching Lewis just with flame torches and dabs and smoke so much weed yeah. and did not miss a step. Like no, he no. didn't slow him down at all. I can't believe it. He's always that slow. <laughs> <laughs> that's the secret it's like the hulk is always but, angry no, but uh, but in all seriousness all you guys are so so quick it's like well, you got to keep up and oh, and i'm you. no no and I'm, I'm i'm not even as a compliment it's astonishment that i had to really concentrate to keep up and you guys were just ripped on, on bongs and band yeah and dabs like how do you do that that is that is horsepower it's, that is, it's high tolerance it, it's probably I, terrible for us i don't know i, I was very impressed also, uh, lead, uh, the bonfire on Sirius XM, tell people about that. Uh, it's me and Dan Soder. Uh, we do four days a week, three live, one pre-recorded, 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern on uh, Faction Talk Sirius XM 103, which is going all, it's all their whole, their whole talk channel now. And I'm going to try to get to the Skank Fest this time. I, my wife wouldn't let me go to the last one. I was fully yeah. ready to go. Uh, it's fair. You said you had a trip planned. I had I a trip planned, and she was convinced I was going to get COVID if I went there. Did anybody get COVID? Oh, I'm sure it was, was a super <laughs> spreader. <laughs> I can only assume. Fuck yes, they got COVID. We did that at, uh, we had Skank Fest South in Houston the year before that, and it was like coming right out of it right. completely. And I mean... When we left, they were like, yeah, everyone got it. <laughs> well, good. Lots of good immunity after that. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> help bring this thing to an end quick. I like that. I like the I like the uh, rose-colored glasses on yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. we're giving it to them so we can get it over with. Well, I, listen, I, I, when I had the first, I had the original, you know, the old OG version, which was pretty nasty. But uh, And I was so sick, and I was ne testing negative, and I thought, oh, I must have acute lymphocytic leukemia. It's the only thing that makes you this sick. But when I, so I was sitting there thinking, well, I, I hope it's COVID, and at least then I'll get immunity. I'll get some immunity out of this, so all this misery, and get something out of it. And now I've had it twice, and I've been around lots of people with Omicron. I do not get it. Now, maybe they will wear off enough soon that I will yeah, get it again. But I, yeah, I've never, I've tested a zillion times. I've never tested positive for COVID once. Do you take the vaccine? I took the first two. I, I have to get a booster, I guess, which I will. Yeah. I suppose I, I'm not that worried the, about I, it. The like, ideal is if you can take the first and then get Omicron. That's the yeah, ideal yeah, combo, yeah. and then you knock it out. Then you're really good. Then you're for a long time. That's, but I, that's I don't your know. Best never, uh, yeah, I've never tested positive for it yet. When the first test came out at all, I think before even like the do you have it? It was did you have the antibodies? Yes, and I did. Oh, that's interesting. I don't remember ever getting like, sick at all. Isn't so. that interesting? But then I also think the doctor was a fan, and I also wonder if he was just like, hey, get out there and live, man. Just like, he didn't even look at the results. He was like, yeah, yeah, no, you had it already. Just stop whining. I love that. Yeah, stop wearing deli gloves to go outside to smoke <laughs> a cigarette. He didn't report you as case zero. So no. I, I think I've understood how this got here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big J brought it My here. love of bat soup. So how did Skank happen? Uh, Legion of Skanks? Yeah. It, start, it was just the time of everyone starting podcasts, uh, Robert Kelly in New York's a hilarious comic, and he was 
kind of the godfather of that out in New York, like starting Pog. He was always on the cutting edge of the technology stuff that was coming out. And uh, I am a few years further, not at this point career-wise, but uh, at the time I just started, I've been doing comedy longer than Dave and Lewis. They were my friends. And I kind of like employed them almost to be like, hey guys, can we like... Uh, do a pod? Yeah, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. Lewis does. He was doing the stuff with Robert Kelly a little bit. And we would just go to Lewis's house at first, like huddled around an iPhone. It's, a lot of us did stuff like that. It's really interesting. How and long then, ago was that? Computer, uh, I guess 11, at least 11 years ago. Wow, that's early with this. Yeah, and then it was just doing it at Lewis's house. Then we got a computer. He had a little mixing board, like a little tiny one that yeah. we could all plug microphones into. A roadcaster. And then we were like, this should be in front of an audience. And then we went to the original stand. The, your original, it was it called Legion of Gangsters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and your original, I'm imagining your original audience <laughs> was like super dedicated. Like, well, it took a while to kind of build them up for sure because we just didn't have like, none of us had a draw, myself. And, they were kind of looking to me for the draw and I had no draw, which was funny. And also the name come up is always funny the, how the name came about was my ex-wife, I think one of the first times uh, Lewis came over, it was, we became friends talking about the game Guitar Hero, the video game, which you have a little toy guitar. Yes. And you uh, play <laughs> along with like this thing on the screen. And we loved it. <laughs> and he would come over and play and, and early early friendship me and her got into an argument in front of him and i think she was accusing me probably correctly of cheating oh. and uh and when she, i don't know if this time she was right she wasn't always right <laughs> but let's assume she was right and uh i was going off to do like my shows in the city uh at the comedy clubs and i was leaving and she was yelling at me outside and i was like i can't deal with this shit right now i have to go to work and she goes, oh, yeah, it's work, right? She goes, go ahead, run off to your Legion of Skanks. Oh, it's fantastic. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> and then I turned around to Lewis immediately in that walk, and I went, that'd be a great band name. You, you said that or he said that? I said it. Oh. And I was like, that'd be a really good band name, Legion of Skanks. And then we made that our guitar hero band name. <laughs> and then we wrote a script that had that title. And then I said, I wish we had it clean because it's such, I don't want to recreate it in a false way. The script? It's so real. The no, the, because our very first episode of doing Legion of Skanks the whole thing was, what do we call this thing? Uh, and we kept uh, bringing up different names. Half of them have already been used. And, uh, and, then, and then Lewis just says, he goes, why don't we just call it Legion of Skanks? We call everything Legion of Skanks. But it's like talked over a bit so we don't have that clean. But it's uh, such a cool moment. And we did. And to what it's become is uh, pretty amazing. But it's all, yeah, my ex-wife's going to come for that copyright eventually. I was going to say, I wonder if she's going to try to come after you for that. I tell the story too much. I should probably be keeping that story more <laughs> no, shut until this divorce is final. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm my like, anyway, we owe her a lot. <laughs> uh, I mean, what's really funny about that, it was um, as a gift, uh, Dan Soder, my radio partner, my girlfriend got me an Xbox with all the Guitar Hero stuff again. Oh. So many years later, oh, you know. Yeah. And I was at my uh, apartment playing it, and I, I messaged Lewis. I video messaged Lewis, and when he answered, I just unpaused the game and had him seeing that I was playing Guitar Hero, and he goes, I'll be right over. <laughs> he comes over with his girlfriend, Kimberly Congdon, another brilliant comic at the time they were dating, and she's so funny because she sat on this couch and watched me and him put on these guitars, and the Legion of Skanks name was already in there, and we clicked. This is four years ago. It's not that it's not that long ago for this to not make sense. And me and Lewis looked at each other with such genuine emotion. <laughs> and I think Lewis or me said, like, this is crazy, man. I go, this is where it all started. <laughs> and Kim Congdon sitting behind us on the couch, she goes, Did you guys just look at each other holding toy guitars saying this is where it all started? Like you're Metallica in the garage in San Fran. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so she was it made us feel immediately silly. And I was like, Yeah, I guess it is kind of dumb. And if you <laughs> do you guys remember guitar we called Guitar Hero? Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Do you remember Guitar Hero? Absolutely. Fuck that was my, yeah. my entire college. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. young males, particularly younger, there it is, younger males. You, you, if you were watching somebody play Guitar Hero, what you will see here is somebody going click, 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 click. All you hear is the clicking because that's oh, all yeah. they're doing is clicking these it, little colors. You're just keeping a track playing by yes. not missing the buttons. Yes. But I will tell you, at the time that came out, I had a lot of like alone time during the day. I think my daughter was like a baby still. And like, you know, I was home with her during the day. But on the downtime of that, I could do, you know, like what, and I was like, oh, you know what? I should learn how to play the acoustic guitar. I have one. And I got the guitaring for dummies. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think I learned the chord progression of 
Romeo in Black Jeans by Michael Penn. <laughs> I don't know why that was the one I chose. And then Guitar Hero came out, and I was like, oh, my fat fingers work way better on these buttons than trying to do this to a guitar. And I'm like, I'll never, I'll never figure. Pete Corielli was is a comic who uh, has one of my favorite simple, fast bits ever. And he was like, I tried to learn how to play guitar recently, and all I've learned was that if I didn't know somebody already played the guitar, I would just say it's fucking impossible. <laughs> and that is how I feel when I look at it still. I'm like, I couldn't even guess how it to begin. Some, and then something about that guitar here is so satisfying. It was so satisfying. <laughs> like, it feels like you're playing with a band. Especially when you can't get through a song a few times, and then yeah. you do it goes, finally got through uh, Free Bird. <laughs> I'm like, did you, though? <laughs> oh, my I'm God. Like, you know, I play on Expert where you have to sometimes hold three buttons at a time. And, and, and it is why... As my wave, wife often says to uh, situations like this, definitely not a chick thing. No. De definitely not. No. Yeah, it was definitely the young, young male deal. Well, that, I love that story, and I thank you for sharing that. It, it, uh, where can people find it? Just the podcast? Just download it? Uh, Gas Digital. Subscribe? Yeah, subscribe at Gas Digital. But all the newest episodes, uh, the newest, I believe, eight episodes are available. It's more than that now. Maybe 20 episodes. I'm always behind because I'm bad at the business. But uh, are always available on YouTube. Do you put up free. video? Oh, yeah, the video yeah. also. Yeah, video on and yeah. uh, on. It's Spotify. so funny. It's so funny. Do you do you remember though? It's ridiculous. We call it the most offensive podcast to try to avoid trouble, but it still gets us. <laughs> you get in trouble? No, trouble's the wrong word. But I mean, there's people who like it's it's so misunderstood. I said I you know, the, the guy that wrote the articles that gave like Shane problems. Shane Gillis. Yeah. Got fired from SNL for an article someone wrote about podcast content. That he did, and that same guy's written articles, kind of about us. I was funny. I had somebody who I hadn't spoken to in years, uh, just like a friend, who I reached out to on Thanksgiving night and was like, "Happy Thanksgiving," and she sent back a link to one of those articles and was like, "Hard pass." And it was like so weird that people can get so like read an article and be like, "But you, like you know me, and that I'm not a Nazi, homophobe, whatever." Hard and pass it, on you just even being yeah, a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like hitting what her up. What yeah. see. Yeah, it was crazy. It was pretty. I mean, because they didn't like what somebody. Oh, I spent the next hour breaking her down through text of how ridiculous that sounds. I'm like someone you know is like you're like oh uh, like someone said you're a Nazi in an article. So like, well then you're probably a Nazi. <laughs> like other than knowing me and knowing that I'm not. Why don't I you guess. sue the guy that wrote the article? I mean, it's deeply offensive. I mean, the, someone said that, but I mean, because in, in, in the world of that thing, though, they're gonna take out of context things you know the, it's like the, it's the like print. the joe rogan mega mix they made at the n-word it's like so many it's like it's all matter of fact things he said you know what i mean it's like none of this is like if you played a full sentence none of these are like hateful comments right you know what i mean they're just right. showing that you treated the world like not a baby and said the word instead you know and it's, that's kind of an odd thing but I, like, I just think that these people in print need to be kind of smacked down a little bit they they, they feel they can say anything no matter the consequence well, it's also people you get national news now out of like a blog. Same. Same. Like that's crazy. A national news out of a blog, someone writes like it's an opinion piece, yeah. and then it's like, yeah, people. Like, Did you see what's? Uh, Did you read that uh, the rafter dot com says someone's a racist? They're like, what's the ra friend of mine wrote out of a, someone's house? A friend of mine wrote me a book called wrote a book called Trust Me, I'm Lying. Fifteen years ago, where he, we described how he had done this, where he had manipulated on behalf of a company, sort of stories about their products in the in the traditional press by writing a stupid blog, getting somebody on Jezebel to cover it and comment on it, and then somebody to put it on Twitter, and then picked up by ABC News, and off we go. Yeah, someone told me that they know a person who's like a troll who does that, and that they said, uh, like they were hanging out one day or something, and he was like, he's like, yeah, how do you do this? Like, How do you get the legs on it? And he was like, uh, pick a celebrity. We'll pick a celebrity that you want me to give like a rough week to, Jesus. and like I forget who it ended up being, but he just showed in a few minutes like that you can get a thing going where like it's getting some sort of traction, or Page Six is picking it up on something it's, where it's, it's like, disgusting. And, it goes, and then it's something it goes. He made it. I guess he made it so ridiculous it was easily disproved. Yeah, yeah. But like you still get that accusation like out there like that easy. I, I hate and catch that. his legs. It's weird. Wow. And did you restore your relationship with this woman? No, I wouldn't probably hang with that person again because they're that easily influenced. Is a weird thing to say. Someone you know isn't someone you know because you read an article is bizarre. So no, but I mean, I definitely made them like by the end of it, they were like, "Well, I hope you have a good show tonight," and <laughs> like trying to like kind of come back around to it. But it That's was it awful. was definitely. Where'd you grow up? Philadelphia. And how'd you get into comedy? Uh, I was always a huge, huge fan of stand up. Who? All of it. Genuinely, Anybody? genuinely, all of it. I, if it was coming on. 
I always use the example that, you know, Carrot Top is a person that's supposed to be like laughed at in comedy. Yeah. And I'm like, when I was watching Comic Strip Live or Caroline's Comedy Hour, and they were like, tonight, Carrot Top. I'm like, oh, sweet. <laughs> I'm in. Gonna get to see some new top props. <laughs> and um, yeah, there was no one who I. How do you think that really, happened? I didn't really like getting it. Um, I don't know. I, my thing was always to make people laugh, I think. That was kind of my. Like in high school, my place, high school my place in school was like to make yeah. it wasn't going to be the athlete or the ladies' man or the suave guy, so it was funny. And I would probably watch a lot. My guess, without even exact examples, was I would just go regurge what I heard at school and use that kind of to be funny. And then when my stepfather brought dice clay to my life. Oh boy, that was huge. <laughs> that was huge to go to school with those jokes at the age I was. I watched that probably like twelve or thirteen. Yeah. Oh, I was a legend at that school after that. So were you, were you saying the, the poet, the... Uh, the whole the, thing, the whatever I could bring from it, yeah. <laughs> the whole thing. And uh, so being a huge fan of it, I, after high school, I, I think I took a year off and then went to community college in like South Jersey somewhere. Mm. And I just met up with a friend from high school and she said like, uh, we we're just kind of catching up. She was like, oh, I thought you'd always try doing comedy. And then I was like, oh Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should try to. I didn't even think. I'm like, where, I don't even know what the lower levels of that is because I assumed anyone on TV, even on those showcase shows, which I know now are like, there's a zillion people who do those shows don't even do comedy anymore. But yeah. I was like, you're on TV, so you're way up. That's a huge thing. Philly seems so close to New York, and yet so far away that like anyone in our school that did something like you know, so and so's in a commercial, like instant celebrity status in the school. Yeah, <laughs> for being like in a commercial or yeah. something. So, but but Philadelphia <laughs> is, is like another country compared to New York. I mean, yeah, it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and and historically, I mean, those states were little countries. I mean, there's some of that cultural and that those, it's just the distances. Yeah, big cultural difference for sure. Oh my god! The but the distances used to be massive. Now it's those you know <laughs> three hour train ride. Yeah. Well, so not even. Yeah. But they um, but so when I was in Philadelphia the next day after she suggested I try it. Uh, my friend asked me to go to South Street in Philadelphia to buy sneakers or something, and I never saw it before. There was a place called the Laugh House. Uh, I've never even seen a comedy club in person before. I was 19, and I went in there, and they said their open mic was on Thursdays. I looked into it. It was, I think it was about a year into this being an all-black comedy club. It was David Brenner's Laugh House before for wow. years, and I guess David Brenner got out of the business of it, and they sold it, and it became a black... So I just organically started there and i said that in that 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 early crew kurt metzger who's brilliant uh started about three weeks after me and about six weeks after me kevin hart started wow at Same this club, club. Mm. yeah this lab it doesn't even exist anymore it's mm. not there but it was such a weird but interesting and kind of fun way to come up i think it's really molded a lot of like what i do on stage learning performance i think it's over like you know if you go to like the mainstream clubs everyone's of course, in the time, and it's the right thing, trying to be witty with their words and write the most clever thing. But there was something about going to the black, because the performance of it was so like big. And I learned that kind of young, like how to be big and inflection and acting things out a little bit. And so it was really fun. I mean, bit. prior would just get there and tell stories and act it out, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, same kind of thing. So it was a little more like animated and not yeah. so smarmy, I felt like, too. Interesting. Yeah. And but I started pandering quick pandering yeah i'm like jewish and i wore a big silver cross and i <laughs> all my clothes were fubu and stuff and i just i pandered no. but i learned how to do well no you know kurt metzger like i said he was like a brilliant brilliant writer from the get-go too and he would go up there and have a hard time sometimes in this club it was funny if someone we'd find these like kind of you know not white but like mainstream rooms yeah uh to do open mics in and they would just welcome they loved kurt so much and they would uh and say to me like you know yeah that Def Jam stuff's not gonna like work here and they were right <laughs> it didn't that crowd of five other comedians didn't want to hear my P Diddy be acting so crazy jokes <laughs> after the end of year of work obligations and holiday family fun it is easy to start the new year very stressed worn out lacking motivation not the way you want to start the new year so if you're feeling like you need a holiday from the holidays i've got an idea do yourself a favor and start taking magnesium breakthrough every night before you go to bed because stress depletes your magnesium levels and magnesium is an important and critical element in getting sleep especially deep and restorative sleep 
The reason Magnesium Breakthrough is so effective is because it's the only organic full-spectrum magnesium supplement that includes seven unique forms of magnesium all in each pill. Magnesium is very important. I remember back in my training days, one of my endocrine fellows used to hammer me about magnesium. So for an exclusive offer for our listeners, go to magbreakthrough.com slash after dark. In addition to the 10% discount you get by using the promo code after dark, you will unlock a special gift with purchase for a limited time only. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash after dark now and get your gift. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel overwhelmed or like you're not showing up the way you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you. And I think everyone knows I'm a big fan of therapy. I was in therapy as a patient myself, and I've referred family, friends, patients to BetterHelp, and I've been very pleased with the professionals there and the services they offer. And no longer an excuse for stigma or you worry about meeting somebody in a waiting room or something. It's all online. Stigma is no longer an excuse. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It is convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. And if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help you get there. Visit betterhelp.com slash after dark today to get 10% off your first month. That is better help, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash after dark. What'd you use for material first out during that open mic period? Self-deprecation, a lot. Um, and then we learned because like the, the black crowds, what was interesting about it, if they, if they sensed like your nervousness about it, that's when you, you get pounced on. Oh. And so what me and Kurt did, which is always, it's a cool story, but we were like, man, if you can like, we'd watch other comics and be like, if you could just decimate one person verbally funny, you know, like at them in the audience who comes at you, like the rest will kind of fall in line. And so we used to go to the DMV and sit on a bench outside cause like so many different kinds of people come in. And we were just to each other, just try to like rip apart, like everybody wow. walking by to kind of get that skill for that. What an interesting. But Kurt was funny because, you know, eventually he wanted to start like killing in these rooms. And I'm over there humping stools and telling the DJ for my four music cues <laughs> and taking my clothes off. I used to get down to, uh, to my underwear on stage for a bodybuilding joke about my stepfather's like friends. They were always in like, the weightlifting world. Yeah. And uh, I used to put, I had, tiny zebra print underwear <laughs> and i would get down to that in a tank top and i would to the 2001 theme oh we playing that was my big closer it didn't matter what the context of it was they were just i mean it <laughs> killed it killed so i mean it was uh, chairs breaking for people laughing so hard and then i ended up meeting uh keith robinson on a gig who became my mentor to take me to new york me and kevin hart actually to new york and uh <laughs> and i did this show with him and I remember, yeah, there's Keith. I remember uh, Keith saying to me at the show, I went up there and killed. I was opening for him. And he went up there and did great. He did very well. But like I hit a different way because I'm doing all this stuff. I'm taking my clothes off. And Keith came over to me after the show and he was like, you know, you're a funny dude, man, but like you should stop doing that, taking your clothes off like thing. And, and it was, I'm like, yeah, 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 man, whatever. And I'm like, whatever you say. He goes, I just destroyed up there. <laughs> like while he's saying this to me and giving me a critique of my comedy, there's like, you know, there's like fat black women trying to take pictures with me in front of an airbrush Tupac backdrop. And like, I'm like, I'll be with you in a second, Keith. And like, you know, with these two girls. And, uh, but it got in my, you know, he was like connected enough in New York and working that I was like, well, maybe it's, you know, it kind of got in my head a bit. And I'm like, yeah, I guess it is more about like what you're saying or writing or doing. It's like, that's, he's right. Anybody can get undressed. And it's just, it's just fat guy with his clothes off joke. I'm like, yeah, I want to be better than that. So I stopped doing it for a while. Do you ever go to Europe, like England? I have done a couple. Of, Apparently, they yeah. like a lot of physical humor. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But they uh, British comedy stinks. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> <laughs> but I stopped doing that that bit for a while, taking off the clothes, and then I got to the finals of a contest against somebody who was very funny. I, th you know, is very funny, and I was nervous, and I was telling all the other open mic comics, I'm like think I'm bringing back the bodybuilding bit. <laughs> and even they were like, it's not fair. It's not fair. And I was like, I got to win this thing. And at, what they did for the finals, they had us go up in front of, uh, <laughs> they had us go up in front of a, a paying, even though the open mic in the black scene was awesome because it was packed, sold out, but free tickets. And it was like DJs. And now we're on a weekend. 
a slightly different crowd because they're paying money to come in. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's a little, it's still a black crowd, but it's a little more adult, less young. And uh, I went up there and my jokes aren't doing well because I have all this like kind of hacky black circuit material. And I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't do the bodybuilding bit, but I just started it anyway. And I'm taking, I'm used to this explosion of when I hits the first big crescendo, I take the shirt off and I'm usually used to people who are like, you know, usually the crowd, you Dying. can't even hear anything. They're yeah. laughing. And it's just like a quiet, you hear someone oh. go like, oh God. Oh, and then no. I'm turning around and unbuttoning my pants going like, oh. I should stop. There's no reason oh. to keep doing this to myself. Oh no. And then I drop the pants in the second one. You hear someone go, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and that song finished. And I remember standing there, I'd be in this pose at the end. And that music would stop and the crowd would be going so nice. Like, I'm Big J. And I'd pull my pants up fast. And you guys have been, you know, walk off to a bunch of high fives. And standing there, that music stopped, deafening silence. Oh. And just one lady in the back goes, what the fuck? <laughs> it felt like it took three hours to pull my pants up. I didn't feel like I had to keep like pawing for them. I'm like, I'll be out of here in a second. Where was this? Oh, at the Laugh House in Philadelphia, oh, all at that same club. Same club. Yeah. But it's just the difference between paying and... Just never did like the actual weekends. I was always doing the Thursday night. Like wow. it was such a hip hop situation. <laughs> you know, it was great. But like, but yeah, but such great lessons learned in that scene for sure. Oh my God. It shouldn't you, be taken for granted. Do you live in New York now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been in New York for like 22 years now. What part? I live in Hell's Kitchen now. Nice. It's nice, yeah, but I've been all, I did Queens to start, Long Island for years, and then when me and my wife split, I went to the city, and I've been in the city ever since, yeah. Where did this come from, the tent? Show them that. This one? Yeah. That's the Legion of Skanks logo. Yeah. where did that come from? It was uh, when I was, I think what we were doing was writing a script at that point. I'm trying to think of why I did it. What the actual? It might have. I hope it wasn't just for the Guitar Hero band, <laughs> but it was. Uh, I made like I used to love the drawing when I was a kid. I draw like five things good, and uh, I used to always do the Guns and Roses banner. Yeah, if you were Guns and Roses with the the shadowy things behind it, and uh, I drew that one time and, and did Legion of Skanks, and uh, then I just just doodling. I wrote uh, the, L O S. This one. Yeah. Yeah. And underneath it, I just wrote uh, like a, you know, made block. It's just doodling, yeah. LOS. And then I was like, oh, it would be cool too if the, if it was like X's instead of, uh, you know, periods like LOS. And then the X, other X would be this. And I just made it a face. So it's the O from LOS. And then people it redo is. it in many different ways. It's a, it, That's it, a contest. It, possibly thousands of these at this point. It's the different so, there's variations. There's so many. Yeah, people yeah, have when, when I was tattoos. on the show, you guys, we did a bunch of, we looked through a bunch of tattoos. Oh, it was the people, yeah, vying for, I mean, now they got tattoos that are like, they're mind numbing to me where it's they're like elaborate. a picture of the three of us yes <laughs> like, I, that's, that's the one forever. i saw it was the guy was on his like his calf or something <laughs> yeah. right was it that one and you're like thank you but like are you out of your mind you, i wonder <laughs> if you could find that is that online somewhere oh legion of skanks, legion tattoos, of skanks I bet. tattoo just kind of throw up there and see what comes up let's just see because it was it was really like i you just went through one after another i think dave was bringing them out well that's the easy those are the yeah that guy got one on his face that's look that, at that. that's out of his mind yeah, there's a picture. There's a wonderful portrait of Lewis. That's so odd to have on you. <laughs> I know, right? Someone had their, someone did a tattoo of a recreation of the Lost Boys <laughs> cover, and it's like there it us is. instead. There, there it is, right? No, 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 no. no, no. That's the uh, the body. yeah. There's the Joe Rogan ones. But yeah, people, it's crazy. It is crazy. So your your fans are, uh, God bless them though, huh? Serious. They're quite serious. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Is that on somebody's head? What's the one yes. on the bottom? No, the one underneath related content. Uh, yeah. Oh, my. Jesus. That's, come on. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, oh, my but it God. is also, so there's something cool about, like, I drew that in the green room of Caroline's Comedy Club 12, 13 years ago. So it is cool. It's like such a. It's, it's becoming iconic. And the thing is, like, I would do it for a band, probably, or a sports team myself. So I get it. But yeah. I'm, but I mean, wow, that one's a lot. So, do you believe that guy's a nuclear physicist? Yeah, <laughs> could be. Likes what he likes, though, you know. Let, let's his lets his hair grow out once in a while. Covers it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. got the hair grow. Out. Got a conference in Geneva. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see if I have anything else I want to talk to you about before I get to our material here. Because we, you know, we do emails and voicemails oh, and yeah. all kinds no, of I good heard stuff. I'm excited. Yeah, let's um, let's 
start with some voicemail, shall we? Okay. Hi, Dr. Drew. My name's Jeff Hardy. I've actually called before from Toronto. Um, here's my question, and I don't quite understand what is going on. I had three ear piercings in my left ear about 16 years ago, and I had them all taken out, but yet the three holes are still there, and if I press on the lobe, they still emit this, some sort of pus. They never Sheesh. seem to heal. Right. Do you know why that is or what I can do about it? Because, like, it stinks like a motherfucker. Like, it's really bad. Thank yeah. you so much. Touch with you, friends. Fuck you, Hitler. Love you. Thank there you, you. go. Oh. Bye-bye. Yeah, nice. Uh, but, yeah. You, lines. I like that. You put hardware in your body, the inside your body, by the way. Even though they're sitting outside, it goes through. Oh. The, and cartilage is notoriously difficult to heal. And if you hit, hit the cartilage at all, they can dissolve. Your whole ear can just start to dissolve with that, those infections. I've had some, there, yeah. There's very limited blood supply there. It takes forever for these things to heal. You, you're going to have to go see somebody, get it cultured, figure out exactly what's going on, take antibiotics for God knows how long. And so see a dermatologist. Start with that. I have to say, uh, when I my nose is pierced, and I uh, <clears throat> when I got that, I remember for forever. Same thing. It took like a long time for it to heal up, and it would smell terrible, like you're saying. And someone said, and I don't know if it's true, but they go, "Yeah, it's the inside of your body you're smelling because there's like a hole right in your nose." And I'm like, "Is that possibly what it, it is? It's, it's really nasty." It's not the inside, but it is with. I mean, when you violate body tissue that's inside your body yeah, and yeah. it gets infected, and that's what smells. It's the bacteria. Yuck. Yes. Yuck. Get some uh, witch hazel, dude. <laughs> uh, give me another one. Hello, Dr. Mommy and the Booth Boys. My name is Zane, um, and Zane? I have a brown question. So I've been noticing over the past uh, probably several months that uh, when I take a shit and look in the bowl, there are long, white, stringy-looking things. Nice. Sometimes mixed in with and sometimes just hanging out amongst my brown. Lovely. It's like... Uh, you know, there was some white in my back passage. Um, however, I do no such thing. Uh, nothing really uh, goes up there. It's kind of like any's but you know, stuff just comes out. So I was wondering, I did some, you know, doctor Google searches, and it seems like there's possibly mucus that might come out if yep. I'm dehydrated or yep. whatever. Yep. Uh, but then I also, um, you know, saw some things about parasites. So, uh, Dr. Mommy, I'm just hoping you can set my mind at ease. I know you're just going to tell me to go see a doctor. Uh, but uh, <laughs> of course. I, you know, I'd like my mind to be put at ease because I don't want worms crawling around in my right. butthole. Uh, other, so thank right. you so much. Uh, love the show. And, uh, yeah, take care. While I'm uh, giving you an answer, look up Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris. Uh, if you see white, long, stringy things in your in the stool, it can be worms. I mean, worms inter- internationally are very common. Once you do like Ascaris in stool kind of things, so we can get the full effect. But they are they are very common. Uh, people coming up from South America and uh, Central America. These we used to see these all the time. And you just, they move though. You uh, you know they're not just lying there. Well, they can, but it's because sometimes they're dead by the time they come out. But but the usual white stringy stuff that looks like semen, he said it looked like somebody had ejaculated in his anus, uh, it's mucus. It's mucus. Some people produce a lot of mucus, some people don't. That's all. And it comes out of your butt? It can come out of your butt. Wow. It can be a sign of inflammation. If you have mucus and blood, that's not good. That's like inflammation, bad inflammation. But Did you go through when you were in med school? My stepfa- my mother and stepfather are both medical professionals. My stepfather, they're both respiratory therapists. Mm. My stepfather should have been a surgeon or something. He's like a, a brilliant guy, but watching him because he's so smart, like when he was in school for all the medical stuff, like you become a hypochondriac. Yeah, it's called medical students. Syndrome. How many times he took me to the emergency room because I was like, I think I have a stomach ache. He's like, is it hurt here? He goes, appendix. We gotta go. That thing. I'm like, I think I'm all right. Yeah. Well, that's that's the that's why we see thousands and thousands of cases of the same thing. So we develop judgment around these things. First time we see them, everything looks like that. Yeah. The first time you read about it, uh, it's, you know, it's always the worst case. But when you see over and over and over again, different contexts, different pre- presentations you learn some judgment and uh yeah unfortunately when you're dealing with your family you what happens you start you go from sort of denial like it's nothing it's nothing to oh my god it must be leukemia you know it's like yeah age has done that to me a nice number two (laughs) everything you know like i had a i had a jammed thumb that i am now it's i'd say about 85 percent now seven weeks seven weeks it's been in pain where something felt really wrong i was worried about what this could have possibly been and I think I'm just, you know, 
45. <laughs> 45. 45 is still pretty young for that kind of stuff. But at my age. But I mean, still, yeah, just like, I know it's like not old, but I mean, you know, I think it's still the but healing. recovery, things, man. Yeah. Healing, recovery, it's fucked up. I've got messed up shoulders and the pain is so bad. Sometimes that gives me a headache. It makes me feel sick. It's that bad. Yeah. It's just from uh, lifting something over my head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's it. Yeah. So, or I mean, you see that when you, when you shut down for a day because someone talks to you over here and you go, excuse me? <laughs> and you're like, oh, there it is. Okay. Done. <laughs> <laughs> so um she'll put a, pi a picture of uh the guy from the series oh shoot uh i i talked about him he looks like lewis looks just like lewis gomez i brought it up on the the skanks when i was there um the show is uh shoot barry 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 thank you very much oh yeah 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 uh, that and guy's great no yeah. hank and he, does he not look like lewis he gomez? really does and, yeah and lewis i when i brought that up i thought he got all butthurt about it it actually, <laughs> it actually worried me he got very like quiet for a little while and wouldn't make eye contact with me but no. i think he rem i because when we were there i don't think i'd met lewis yet i think i don't think he'd come in here and, and I think no he I, did it after yeah, he yeah i think after. i met him for the first time and i think god i somehow and then it just came to me while i was sitting there i go i know who this guy is the, and particularly the guy in the picture in the left upper corner yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that one yeah yeah when he's serious face yes for sure. serious face. <laughs> yeah it is funny. he didn't mention it though that he was pissed off that it was offended by that lewis has man-made alopecia yeah <laughs> so he just shaves it every day right is that what he does yeah lewis shaves it every day and he has eyebrows though is that because he would be like i have a horseshoe if he didn't oh or? it's hilarious <laughs> yeah it Don't really it. is hilarious. Yeah, he'll get the. <laughs> he grew it out like a little bit before one time. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how that happens. I've looked down, man. Like of all Captain the problems Stuben, I have, like, yeah, you know. all the problems I have with uh, stuff like I, Not, my hair. Thank God, hair. my hairline stayed in there. Uh, although they've really figured it out with that. Soder, my radio partner, got the plants? transplant. Implants? Didn't tell anybody until it took. Yeah. And like, yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. It worked. Was and he like, like Lewis with a big area on? No, no, no. He was starting to, but he was Just getting the, like the back. The, the yeah, he was getting the here and, yeah. and the back, but yeah. like it, damn, it worked. No, it's expensive. But Lewis would look weird with hair at this point I, now. I know. It I would like total to say sense. With Expensive as shit though with those transplants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's expensive. It and it, it could not work. It's like uh, in vitro, right? Right. <laughs> you spend a zillion dollars and they go, didn't nah. Take, didn't take, sorry. <laughs> like you don't get any of your money back either. You know what's so funny about men and balding and hair is um, in the 70s, you had to have long hair, right? You, you, No matter who you were, your hair had, you could not see an ear. Right. Seeing an ear was like odd, uncool. I remember I was like probably a teenager, 15, and I'd wear my hair down to my chin all the time. And anything above that would be like disturbing. you are like, no, 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 my hair. Yeah, what are you conforming? <laughs> but I noticed that uh, Adam and uh, Carol and I were watching uh, Love Boat and Captain Steubing, who has just this tiny rim of hair, had to grow it over his ear. Uh, right, yeah, and, and, yeah, they, yeah. and then you could tell they'd blow dried it over the ear, like feathered it back over his ear, this little rim of hair. Let's get Cap Captain Steubing in there. It's so stupid. Ugh. They, I like that he even try stooping. Right. They said stew. They'll no, figure it no, out. No, no, no. We need to see his hair, not with the hat on. Come on now. That's why I wear the hat all the time. Oh, you can see it. You can see it in those hat pictures, Yeah, actually. you can see it coming down. There you go. See it? Look yeah, at that. Yeah. <laughs> he has no hair. He has no hair. And <laughs> they had to bring it down over the ear. And again, you can tell that somebody had been working with a blow dryer on it. It's so it's such a weird period of history. It's funny, too, the things that make people so insecure that they have that does I've just never... I understand fat insecurity and all kind of I don't, the know, hair ones. Yeah, I'm like. Well, you know. said your dad was into bodybuilding. My stepfather. Your stepfather. No, he was a power lift. He lifted for like competition, like heavy weights. Oh, but yeah. he had uh, a lot of bodybuilder like friends and stuff. And we've gone to things where I've had to watch another grown man lacquer up another man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With the, the crazy the, that crazy tan oil. Yeah. And so it's a weird world. How old's your dad now? Your stepdad. Uh, he's sixty four. How are his joints? He's doing all right, actually. He does fine. Yeah, he doesn't really he have too much weights? of a problem. He still has weights. Well, yeah, a bunch. So him. he keeps going for it. Good for him. All right, another voice message. Hey, Hitler. So I got a strange question. Is it possible or how is it possible for someone to hold in a fart, but then when they sit down, the fart gets released? Because my fucking girlfriend says that she never feels like one is coming, but then, whenever we get in the car, like without fail, whenever she opens the door and sits down and shuts the door, that's when she needs to fart, right then. And I don't fucking believe her, 
but is there something in the human body that can cause you to, like, release a fart when you sit down that doesn't have to do with any butt hair? Because I checked down there, and it's not hairy. Keep my eyes tight, y'all. Is this what he's going to fight with his girlfriend about? This is it? Sounds like it. Yeah, I think she's done with him. Now, I would think so, too. Yeah, I think officially now. That's how you do that. She, she's like, she probably tells her friends in circle. She goes, <laughs> I've been cracking rats in front of this guy for a month. He's not kicking the hint. <laughs> Uh, so yeah when you sit down there's all kinds of muscular contraction of the lower abdominal muscles and legs and of course that can be a time and oh, by the way you're dropping onto a seat and it can force air out it just does it no big deal it's just like nothing it means nothing about nothing cut her loose yeah, let and her, let her go let her be free uh, it's meant to be she'll fart back into your life <laughs> here is jason over the last few years i've noticed that when i drink alcohol not every time i have a 20 minute period of stinging sensation in my dick after i ejaculate only when you drink it stings and I feel like I have to urinate, but when I try to piss, very little comes out. Pissing makes it feel better, but the pain instantly comes back when I'm done urinating. And it ends up being 20 more minutes of stinging and eventually it goes away. Uh, let's see. Only when I'm drinking, but not every time when I drink. I can have six beers a day. Nothing happens. Two beers the next time, stinging pain, but it never happens sober. So I've been able to pinpoint that it's alcohol, but why? Not an alcoholic, afraid to bang while drinking now. This is my favorite time to slam the clam. Okay, uh -huh. so alcohol is a well-known irritant of the urethra. And the irritation and the split pee and all that stuff is just him having irritation of the urethra. It's not infected, it's just irritated from the alcohol in the semen. Why, why it's just from the semen, I don't know. And why it doesn't have it every time, I don't know. But it's sort of a nothing. But yeah. beer particularly, beer is actually the big, he drinks beer and beer is the biggest culprit of irritating the, uh, the pee hole, as you would say. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds horrible. Big J says, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very, people, listen, <laughs> urethritis of various stripes is very, very common. I had, it's funny, speaking of the thing I, st I tried, a cycle of steroids towards the end of high school once, and uh, would have, when I would have sex, after I would ejaculate, or while it was happening, I would get blinding blinding headache pain oh, yeah. in the back of my neck where yeah. it was like I, I'd see white yeah. and I'd have to like lay down. It was a very scary thing. And yeah. I remember I went to the hospital finally for mm -hmm. it and the doctor came in. It was so, I don't know if he even looked up from the clipboard. He goes, you doing drugs of any kind? And I was yeah. like, no, I don't do drugs. And he goes, you're not taking any kind of like over the counter or anything? And I was like, is this confidential? Because uh, <laughs> I started a thing of steroids. He goes, it's spiking your blood pressure. Stop yeah. taking steroids. Yeah. And I went, okay, never happened yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Never it, had the it, problem it, even sort of once again. It, it's, it's called like, postcoital headaches, and they're, they're very common. They can be an aneurysm, or they can be nothing, or they can be blood like pressure. It feels like an aneurysm. It's scary. It feels, yeah. That's what it feels like. You're like, how am I... Out of nowhere, in the, in the back of the head. It didn't yeah, make it's, sense, it's but always, it was scary. It's typically in the back of the head. Yeah, it's sort of typical. What were you taking? Equipoise. The, I think it's like a horse steroid. Wow. <laughs> How, where'd you get it from? How did you think to do it? Or is, was your dad's friend supplying you? Or no, I think my stepfather did it too for a little bit. Like also, and we were. It was, I was like nineteen, I think, when I, when I tried it. But like, uh, it works. It does work. No, that, that you know, it's funny. My step pops actually. St he doesn't take anything at all like that at yeah. all anymore. But yeah. he's really like, he was always a pretty big believer in, which I guess sort of makes sense now in the world how much they dole, dole out testosterone. Oh yeah, for low T. But my stepfather always claimed that he was like, that's the fountain of youth. He's like not doing it like abusing it. Testosterone. He was like, he was like, yeah, he was like just like using testosterone in general. Like it will keep you like uh, young and moving. But like he's so worried because I had a doctor. I have to go get my blood levels done again. But a doctor gave me a prescription for a testosterone recently. Yeah, and I just haven't gone back for the second blood, but my step pop, like, he, like, lives vicariously through it. He goes, you taking it? You feeling great? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine, I guess. I mean, I'm not, like... I'm so jealous. I really not, want to take testosterone. I'd love to take it. Yeah, your I, levels I, are already too I, high? I, prostate cancer. Oh, yeah, he's... Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. No, it sucks. But I remember when I, when I, when I had to get my prostate out, I, I sat down with the surgeon. I go, and in five years, you're going to put me on testosterone replacement. And the guy's <laughs> like, mm, whatever. <laughs> Let's get this prostate out. All right, let's get some videos in here. What is this flubbing Bert's name all about? Jeans. Hey, everyone. Have you seen the Red Band trailer for the upcoming comedy, The Machine? It stars Brett Chrysler and Mark Hamill. <laughs> I saw this. I saw you posted, but I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't no, see it either. I watched it, and I'm like, is this real? It's real. Uh, it's real. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm like, did somebody make this? I, I, and, and I think the director tweeted to me the trailer. And I wasn't familiar. I'm like, I looked at it and I couldn't. It looks like a legit film, but I'm like, what is this? I don't, I don't know anything because I have another movie called The Machine in my collection that's 
Yeah, then there's this. the Machinist, which is a totally different thing. Yeah, I have movie. that too. But Why are they so like, confused by uh, this? It's it's a movie based on a story, a true story that is Brett's like main Brett. joke wow. that he tells in all his comedy shows <laughs> yes. or something. Brett. Brett Chrysler. Wow. The best. The fact that he's short and he goes to Brett. I think it's one of Brett's stories. Like, don't sound so familiar well, if you didn't exactly. get like it my so buddy, wrong. My buddy Brett and his stories he tells. Brett's like main joke. Uh, who are these people? <laughs> it's a it's a movie podcast. Oh, and and why were they so? I I couldn't understand why they were so nonplussed about it being a real movie. Like you're not like Bert. Yeah, can we see like a minute of the of the trailer? Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, this is good. You haven't seen it yet? No. Oh, it's so good. Give you guys a taste. Yeah, oh, it's a Red Band trailer. Too. That's great. <laughs> My father was no criminal. He was a salesman. And then you stole the only thing he ever cared about. Sorry. Made him say fuck honest living. Mark Hamill. If you want respect. <laughs> Just like so good. He's just a good vibes guy. Whenever yes, he's around, just yes, happier. Yes, he, he got an award in Los Angeles. They gave it to him at the uh, Improv, and that the guy that gave it to him was a journalist. And he just kept saying that. He just such joy in your comedy. Oh, so whenever he's coming like a guest on any of my shows, you're always like, "This is gonna be easy and fun." <laughs> just he just back goes and for fun. it. Yeah. All right. What else we got? Some TikToks. Yeah, we got some TikToks. <laughs> Oh, what the hell? It sounds like it hurts. Oh, she hit her head? See, I think to me, this looks like somebody in a cute manic state. There are meth. Or yeah, something. that's, that's I mean, drugs, I feel like. Yeah, or it could be hallucinogens, yeah. I mean, it's really, she's, oof, it sounds like she's injuring herself. Wait, you're covering your mouth it off. Something I rarely see you do. What What's if, going on? What if she's practicing just like a martial art or something? I, it wouldn't look like that. I mean, that's possible. <laughs> Is that what she's supposed she's to do? Like you never know when John Wick's around the corner. I mean, it, 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 I think that's what she thinks she's doing. Well, maybe. You're concerned about her head, though. I will say she's like planting her head first. See? No, that yeah. one hurt. Yeah, you're right. That's, that that one does not seem like uh, somebody with mar martial arts training. Again, head, head first on the cement. No, but she's flipping it so that the head never gets the impact. No, the head's that getting the impact. One, that first one, that, that no. last one, the one right before this one, yes. head caught some impact for yes, sure. for real. <laughs> like, for real. Yeah. Why? Do you no, know something we don't know? No. Oh, you're seeing it. Okay. You Where is impact. this? Oh, Jesus, Wait. you can hear it. I mean, the back is definitely getting a lot of it. That, okay, oh, yeah, that, she got that is not. That this is in Asia, right? I see. I, I see. Uh, yeah, there's some Chinese lettering on the it, building. It could it. also be Monterey Park in Los Angeles. Trust me. Yeah, I was gonna say it could just be an area. <laughs> yeah, or even you know Koreatown in Los Angeles. But anyway, okay, what else you got? Hey, good for her. Yeah, I know. Uh oh. Yeah, I haven't done this in a long ass time, so. Oh. Let's see what I get. Uh oh. Pulling himself up the tree without his legs. Good for him so far. Oh no, don't fall, oh Jesus, oh my God. He's okay. Does he get up? Holy shit, bro. Wow. <laughs> no kidding, bro. He's pretending that he tended to do that. Holy shit, bro. You know, I couldn't imagine being light enough to pull myself up a rope that high. Yeah. And then also uh, being light enough 
that if I fell that same way, it wouldn't shoot my asshole through the top of my head. I couldn't imagine falling like that. That kind of fall, I can already know my reaction. It's, I keep saying ow in a scared voice yes. and yes. looking at people around, I go, ow, ow, is so, it bad? Somebody get me. Is it bad? I don't feel my feet. <laughs> Oh, that's good. <laughs> You're just like, bro, what was that all about? <laughs> Bra. <laughs> Bra. Woo. Okay, give me another one. Here's how men communicate with each other. Hey, mm. man, you want to go out to the restaurant? Yeah, what time? 7.30? Okay, I'll see you there. That's how men communicate with each other. Here's how women communicate with each other. Hey, what are you doing tonight? I don't know. My hair is all fucked up. Well, what do you want to do later? I'm not sure. The conversation goes fucking everywhere. This type <laughs> of conversation is very natural and normal for them. When I say men and women, a better description would honestly be masculine energy and feminine energy. Because there's a lot of women who can have masculine energy and a lot of men who can have feminine energy. Feminine energy is very flowy. Masculine energy is very directed. When you go and you're talking to girls and you want a vibe or chemistry with the girl, when a girl's like, we have a vibe or we, we have chemistry, what she's really saying is when I talk with him, it feels like this and it feels natural and normal. And so, Being hey, coach, can you just tell us what the workout of the day is? <laughs> and by the way, my wife definitely communicates like that. I, I, we make fun of it all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. We'll, we'll ask a question and we'll get an answer from something that happened three minutes ago. Yeah. It's like, okay. Anyway, you're done with that one? Okay. Let me ask chicks, you. Chicks, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, medically speaking, chicks, right? Yeah, I just don't. I only have my wife to compare everything. All right. Is there more? Do you want to smell them? Oh. How about smell? Oh, geez. Smell it. Oh. No, because you got a lot to say about these things. So, oh. smell. How it stink? Wow. Do smell bad? Real bad. <laughs> well, I do envy. I really do in these situations. And I felt this way when I went to the gathering of the Juggalos as well. Oh, you went to the gathering. Lack I didn't of, hear about that. Okay. Lack of body shame. Yeah. My, yeah. I, I'm like, I wonder. admire it. How much, yeah. How unburdened is this guy? Yeah. If I was in a situation where they were like, hey, man, you got to take your shirt off and be on camera, I'd be like, well, I mean, give me a bullet and a gun for after because I can't listen to what people are going to say about that. And this guy just lives it. I read the Gathering of the Juggalos. I'm like, God bless all of you for just not giving a fuck. Did no you go up cares. on stage with him? Oh, uh, yeah. No, not with the Juggalos. I went up uh, and did comedy. Oh, you did uh, comedy. But did uh, yeah, anybody but throw was... anything at you or did you have to have security or anything? No, the, the first, I did it twice. The first time I did it, was uh that was a weird situation because what they, at the gathering of you know, the second time was a little more like they they kind of figured out the comedy part of it oh, yeah. and it was still like and you're not gonna really get much jokes off you kind of just gotta like fuck with the crowd and yes stuff. yes but the first i didn't realize what their what their whole thing was which part was uh just like their family and uh because they're uh, all white rapping that they have to really like tread lightly on like uh, any kind of race issue. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, man, for a rap festival, there uh, is zero black people here. Oh. And then one black guy stood up in like the back of the audience and he was like, what about me? And I was like, one jug of bro does not uh, whatever make. And, uh, and then they just started like, and then someone stood up and goes, hey man, it doesn't matter what color we are. We all bleed clown. And then I asked in the microphone if I could stop doing comedy then. I was, like, I was like, can I stop? I don't even know how to reply to that. We all bleed clown. That's them, man. Yeah, I, I, I've wanted to go to the gathering for a long time. I it's wanted, a very, very, yeah. those guys rule. Yeah. Like the, the, the actual two guys yep. from, uh, I feel, t I, I think uh, uh, Violent J has medical issues. It's now, hard. So yeah, 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 he's having a lot of, uh, and I watched a documentary on them where it was talking about anxiety too, which I. Oh, he's had forever. He's I've had a. <laughs> a lot of issues with that myself so like uh I, I yeah i really felt for him on that but yeah those guys are those guys are good dudes they really did something cool i, I think like skank fest almost in a way a hundred percent it's our kind of version of that it's yeah, like, i agree i mean it immediately reminded me of that, that yeah and, on like and an I'm underground afraid, level a misunderstood grouping of people i'm afraid to go to the i've been advised against going to the gathering that if, if i went i'd have to bring security that's what they say but i i don't know but the point is i don't think you need security but what i think you know you you wouldn't want to stay there yeah you know you want to like go to a hotel or something but i think the walk around the people watching is fantastic oh, I, I, yeah. i've always loved juggalos i have no problem with it's them but a, but they but the skank fest i thought oh this is the one this mm -hmm. is what I, I can go to and see, yeah, yeah. see what it's all about. Yeah, it's the same and kind we, of thing. And I've gone to Ellis's vibe. thing forever. I've gone to a bunch of his thing. Ellis Mania. Sim similar, yeah. So great. Similar. So uh, back to this kid with the uh, with the armpit. That is called acanthosis nigricans. It's actually kind of a, it's associated with diabetes and things. It's kind of a nasty thing. 
It's um, not just skin tags? No. It's, oh, eight, that's that kind of fluffy looking dark uh, acanthosis, that's called. Oh, and, the thing on the actual armpit. Yeah. The skin the, tags are above it. Yes. Uh, and he, um, uh, oh, you know, the other reaction I had to this video is uh, Christina's back. I mean, Christina's back. She's not showing me the kittens anymore. We got, we got a Christina. Christina has returned. She has returned. Christina's yes. back. No, no, she has returned. <laughs> I, I'm good to see her in, in prime form again. So there's another one behind this I noticed. Yeah, we got we got two really fun ones coming. And by the way, we, he has tattoos. Wouldn't you put a tattoo on something like that if you were prone to doing tattoos? Like that's the other thing too. I have up? no tattoos on like they're like oh you don't have like anything on your chest or anything. I go no one would see it ever. Right, right. Even right. the women I have sex with would see it through a tank top strap. <laughs> 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 like, what does that say? He goes, I'll just tell you. It's a picture of my grandma. I don't, you don't have to see it, though. Yuck. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Oh, my. Da, da. Oh, boy. See that again? That eczema is the least of the issues. Yeah, it's got... Uh... Da, da. Sheesh. That looked neurological to me, but okay. And it's got impetigo around his mouth and stuff. Impetigo? Impetigo, strep infection, like the skin's infected. Oy. Oh, my God. Oy, indeed. Oy, indeed. His how, teeth. How did he know to do the... All right, well, anyway. Yeah, they figured out TikTok somehow. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. He figured out TikTok. I don't, I don't know. But uh, yes, there's some videos also yeah, to look got, at. Got one more fun one for you. Oh, a TikTok? Mm-hmm. Would you date a trans person? No. no. Honestly? Think about it for a second. No. No. <laughs> okay, got your answer? No. no. <laughs> I didn't need a second. Thank you. Well, if you said no, I'm sorry, but that's pretty discriminatory. I'm done. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> There's no discrimination in what I said. I wouldn't date a person that has a penis. Yeah, you're into what you're into. That's okay. It's really, it's a weird place we're in, though. Exactly, if you go, I wouldn't date a trans person. Go, you're transphobic. Goes, yeah. I don't want to date... Someone with boobs and a dick. <laughs> That's all. And some people do. And God bless them. Yes. Yeah. And, absolutely. and by the way, I, other than not being sexually attracted to somebody, doesn't mean you're not like personally attracted. You couldn't be friendly or love them, find them sweet, terrific, whatever. I mean, that looked like a, that woman looked fin- fantastic. Yeah, my less no friends one, are my gay friends because I don't also blow them. Right. <laughs> exactly. Make sense. Exactly. You're gay. You're, yeah. You're, you're, you hate well, gay said, people because you don't the blow pro- them. The gray area of living is over. Do you know what I mean? That's what I said before. He goes, I don't know why I can't say, like, I defend people's right. You want to cut your wiener off and be a woman? I say, go for it. But I should also be allowed to, like, make fun of it like anything else. <laughs> well, like anything else. So talk to me about that. What, what do we do with this present moment? It's a weird time we're in. And and Skankfest always, or Legion of Skanks always pushes the limits. It, yeah, no, it, without a doubt. But I, I think hopefully, you know, there's still there's people listening always that want to, like, take you down and stuff. But... For the most part, you know, it's a show you'd have to like find to listen to. You know what I mean? We're not like on primetime TV or anything. But but you're willing to say stuff that other people might not say. Do you worry about that? Yeah. No, I do, definitely. And, and I, more, I think more, I mean, you've been in comedy for a long time. I mean, what do you think about this present moment? Does it piss you off? Are you okay with it? Just roll with it? Or? I don't know. It's, I've been told like the overcorrection will settle down. And maybe it will. You it's, know what I mean? It's, I, we've been, it's been a long time. It's been longer than South Park predicts. That's right. They say seven-year uh, cycles of this, but it's going on longer than seven years. I don't know. I said everything that gets like perverted to like try to start attacking everything starts off on such a noble co- you know, yes. like anything, all those things that start, whether it's they're, like they're, Black Lives Matter or a uh, Me Too movement, I'm always like, shit, looks like Harvey Weinstein is a guy that really needed to be like stopped years ago. And like, thank God we got him. I don't know if you're you're putting that in the same list as like Aziz Ansari go, having a bad date, having a bad date and bringing the wrong wine. Yeah, <laughs> like anyone who tells their their uh, quote unquote story and it involves he didn't have the right kind of wine. I like. <laughs> I'm really questioning how upsetting that night was. Like this situation would happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, yeah, there's no like. And I said I did a radio show for years with a woman who was the first one to say me too. But she was, you know, I I supported her and she was really adamant about this stuff. But I kept telling her like. It's going so far that it's going to undermine what you're trying to do. There's no due process anymore. It's just, yep. it's just you can claim anything, and that, that that undermines the real problem. And it's more. And now, now she agrees and with me. It's years later. Now she goes, yeah, I should have listened to you. But now yeah. people will also like 
they don't even want to dig into what the actual behind the story is. You know, you hear it's like why it's like, it's like you know it's just easier to fire you and yes, yes. and get it over. I've always defended the one. And you know, I don't know Roseanne at all. I don't know her, and it does seem like she's definitely gone like off a rocker a little bit. Yes, I completely believe her thing when she says, "I thought that bitch was white." And the thing, I really believe her. Yes, I really because I don't think she's stupid enough. To have put something that rate, I think she would know, like, even if she felt that way, to, like, keep that off, like, the world's radar. But it kind of doesn't matter. People people go, you did it, and therefore it's, a, it's revealing something about you that even you didn't know. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, exactly. you didn't even know that you were this racist. Right. I think I would know. I, 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 I think, think I'd be aware of it. But what's, what's troubling me as a clinician is, is people with sort of mental illness stuff where they, they're... They start unraveling for one reason or another, and they go on Twitter or wherever, and they say some shitty stuff. No. They, you know, I no, mean, Rosanna's a long mental health story. I mean, thank God Twitter wasn't around when Charlie Sheen was doing his thing. God knows what he would have left behind. Right? Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, tweeting it out and getting to go on, like, those rants, no one stopping and, and it at all. He would have had video. Oh, who knows what would have been on there. God, that would have been entertaining. It would have been good, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Those things said the meltdowns are always entertaining, but I said when I was looking at the, the Kanye West stuff, it's like, why is no one just grabbing this guy and, like, taking him somewhere? Like, he has to go... Like they're they're going to focus too much on the thing like uh, I love Hitler. It's like stop looking at the words I love Hitler and like breaking down why that's crazy to say and realize that he's out of his mind for saying he's that. He's saying crazy stuff. He doesn't love Hitler. But part he of doesn't. the problem with poor Kanye is when you really, I was listening to him on uh, Lex um, Have you interviewed Friedman's? him ever? No, I never read him. But I was listening to him on Lex Friedman and you got to have, you have to have a trained ear to understand what was going on there. He, he has a thought problem. He, he, he was, things were not connecting right. And I thought, oh shit, he's in trouble. But your the average person would just go, hey, he's an asshole. I, don't I watched that one too. I thought the most telling thing of that was when he said the line. He was like, he goes, man, things have been fine for me. I haven't taken medication in over a year. He goes, yeah, that's probably the thing. <laughs> like that's probably would that's probably solve the, a the, lot of the this. issue. And it's yeah. a shame you feel bad for his kids and, and all. And he's got a, it's a this. subtle form of probably bipolar because it's not it's not the usual. Not like Sheen. Sheen was hypomanic as shit. And uh, let's, we got an RPC video out there somewhere, don't we? I've been waiting for this for quite some time, but I haven't had a chance to get to it yet. But is this, you've been teasing. Now, well, let me. Let me and welcome oh. to Lucifer's Light. I'm your hot host, RPC Band, and we are here at 2395 Wagner House of Proper 2C Building 18, 124th and 1st Avenue, east side of Harlem. That's right, guys. You That's where he is. Loud. I am here at 917-353-2913. Or three four seven two eight one three one five six or six one six two four one eight six one five or six one six three seven three uh nine one seven three five three nine one seven three five three two nine one three or three four seven two eight one three one five six or six one six two four one eight six one five. Okay, okay, I'm here, guys. Yeah. So let me know, guys. Hey, uh, what's going on, man? At twenty three ninety five. Hey. I am here, guys. RPC looking for some hot guys who want to come over and party hard. Let me know. Uh, I just had a sandwich easy. I'm, I'm trying to watch what I eat, guys. I don't know. But uh, that, it was a ham and cheese, but just not, God, didn't do me for shit. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> whatever. Not much about eating, okay? But I'm um, here tonight with 7353 <laughs> I love it. He starts every Instagram live like that. He does? Yeah. Just here's my address and six of my phone numbers. And, and he, he he's a guy we've been following for quite some time. I actually went to East Harlem and visited him. Oh, really? Yeah, it's quite a place he lives in. And uh, he told me, I've not seen him do a character. He told me I like doing characters and then giving people these experiences online. It's the first yeah. time I've really seen the character. Is that a character? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because again, because he was slipping in and out of it a little bit. Mm. But I love the fact that he's watching what he eats. I, his, <laughs> his, uh, his place, he had a little bit of a hoarding issue, and uh, his kitchen was piled high. And I won't say high. I mean, like, Dishes. three feet. Oh, yeah, all that. But uh, cakes, like hostess oh. cakes and things. And, and I thought, oh, man. And he's not a svelte fellow. And I thought, this is not going to go well for him. I don't know why intervention I can watch with just, like, the entertainment value of the show intervention, but hoarders hits me. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's, I, my thing is more like I wouldn't want to live in a house. Like, you know what I mean? It's, I've had to live it's in so other people. I've had to live that. in other people's like, not squalor is the wrong word, but just like their sort of mess and the it's, messy it's way squalor, they live. Yeah, squalor-esque. Yeah. So that's always bothering me. I have a question with watching all these TikTok videos yep. for you as a doctor. Yeah. Do you worry about the future of yes. academia? <laughs> but I'm saying in general where it's like, who's the next doctor? It's like everyone 
has a shot in that. Before you, people would say, waste their time going through uh, med school and, and you know, residencies and all the stuff you have to go through for that. You're like, well, I mean, t- I'll take a shot at being a makeup tutorial Influencer, person on yeah. YouTube. Or, yeah, yeah. it's like. Well, it, it, it's, 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 it has a multiple layers to it. One is, on one hand, you're only going to have people that really want to do this. Sure. Right? Which is a good thing. Uh, it needs to be a calling or you shouldn't be there because it is not, it's tough. Number one. Number two, the training is breaking down badly where it's becoming all very algorithmic. You, know, these, you just follow these 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 uh, flow sheets. Yeah, yeah. That's a disaster in the making. And they're trying to take doctors out of it and put nurse practitioners and sort of these, what I call physician extenders out to see the patients. Yeah, and then yeah. make all the liability go up to the doctor who or he or she has to review all the records, which is impossible to, to do satisfactorily, impossible. Can't do it. And so the system is fucked up right now and the training is fucked up. We, you know, we were trained to use, you know, to come, I'm gonna, I'm gonna evaluate Jay. He is a, you know, a singular biology that I have to make judgments about, not follow some flow sheet that the hospital right, gives right, me. Right, right, right. Now I'm gonna make some judgments based on what I think is right for you in this moment and follow it very carefully. They're not doing that anymore. Yeah, yeah I feel, you know, it's like, I remember that movie that came out when I was younger. I don't, I forget who was in it, but it was, maybe it was Steve Gutenberg. Where like they, that's when I remember watching that, that he was like, oh, you can go, if you can't get into med school here, you can go to med school like. In Granada or whatever. Yeah. Was that The the Doctor? Was that that show? That movie? No, no. It was, was it called Bad Medicine or something like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Some, <laughs> something where they went away. It was like everybody yeah. went away and I, yeah. my, I remember my stepfather telling me like, that's like a thing. Yeah, like, you can't get into med school here. Yeah. There's, a, there's not so much of that anymore because not, not so many people want to go into med school. Yeah. It's so, yeah. My, uh, yeah, my step pop got offered like full ride to like we would have had to move but it's like chiropractic school he was like an academic he's just like a weirdly he likes training savant academic yeah. guy like even when he went he was 20 i made him laugh with this over thanksgiving but it was funny my mom met him my mom she was 30 and she was in her second year of her associates to become respiratory therapist like she went back she worked in like retail always when i was a kid little kid and then my step pop came in. He was like a weightlifter who worked at GNC <laughs> in the mall, like a mall job. It didn't strike me at the time when he was 20. And it's also it's funny, the age things hit you. He was 27 wow. or 28. My mom was 30. But my step pop, it's funny, it didn't seem like it when you'd look at him or meet him or kind of see like the way he conducted himself. But my mom got pregnant with my brother. And my step pop was like, what? He goes, what, what do you do again, basically, to my mom? Like, what is it you're doing? She's like, um, struggling through college to become a respiratory therapist and he's like yeah i'll just do that i'll try that yeah. and i mean by his second year a hospital paid him the promise to work there for five years it, it after is, it, this is an, <coughs> a, a nut, and you know, i'm like the, where is that though i don't know where i don't know where that kind of like savant you know i don't know if you call it genius or yeah. just like supreme intellect is directed in helping people anymore i think it's like you know yes how do you make the ultimate that's podcast right. camera that's now, right you know? how do how do we get find those people and really train them put them in pathways where they can be optimally deployed and i bet were they both still practicing when uh, covid hit were they having to deal yeah. with all that yeah my mom so retired right after whew, that's a big that's respirators you know their straight therapy was front line man. my mom said i didn't really follow up on this too much but it did seem the way the the uh, ventilators were kind of like like the news of that died out when it died out very quick and my mom the ventilator told, shortage or the just excessive like the, use the, of ventilators? The, the use of them. Yeah. And my mom said, uh, before I heard, I think I heard stuff like this on the news eventually, but she was telling me pretty early in the game. She's like, yeah, I think these vent- like these ventilators are actually, like, when they're putting them on too early. The, the problem. Yeah. The thing was like, it's like, the pressure. Their hearts are getting like solid because they're not using them themselves. Like they were, it's, it's a little more it complicated. Something like that. Yeah, she, the, the lung scar. She was, she, was, she was. I don't think it's a good thing. She she's absolutely right. On she's yeah. absolutely right. That's what's fucking everybody up. They, the it causes stiffness in the lungs, and so it makes things even worse. You're feeling high flow oxygen, high pressure. It makes the inflammation that's already there worse and scar. Yeah, that's what she said. So, she was told me like way early in the game. She goes, I, they, they wanted us to keep doing this. Like she's like, but I don't think this is a good idea. Good for her. Well, Jay, it's great to see you again. It really is. Thank you for being here and I uh, loved your stories. Thank you for I, could, me. I could sit and listen to you talk about comedy and your life stuff. Let's do it again for I, sure. I would love it. And I will be, I will come to the Legion of Skanks, I promise. Next I, time you come to New York, please right, let I, us know. Done, Get you on that, the bonfire. Done and done. And then I will, I'm going to do everything I can to get to Vegas in September. Open invite. All right, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Take care. So, Big Jay Okerson, uh, the bonfire at SiriusXM, bigjcomedy.com. And we'll see you all next time. 
All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.